Hello channel, hello everyone. So today is just an opportunity for me to reflect about what I have learned about the lesson power three and gender inequality to all of you. So first thing first, I'm gonna start with some definition and key points that I have learned from the book, and I think that it is really important to understand and to know about that. So first, I'm gonna talk about first about what is absolute poetry. So absolute poetry refers to um, the way that you are really poor, that you can't afford some of the basic needs of food, water, um, shelter, home, education, like other people, like the average uh, a person have. And yeah, this is about absolute poetry. So what is another one? What is um, Relate to poetry. Relate to poetry refers to the poetry that you compare yourself with other people that is rich than you. And after that, you think yourself is poor. For example, you don't have iPhone 14, and other people they have iPhone 14. So when you compare yourself with other people that have iPhone 14, you think that oh, I'm really poor. But actually, you're not poor. But the way you're poor is because you compare yourself with other people. And out of one, I'm going to talk about what is extreme poetry. Extreme poetry refers to the poetry that is struggling, living a life with less than 1.25 dollars a day. So it, it means that you live less than um, 1.25 day, it means that you are extreme poetry. So there are three um, poetry in this case, yes. One more, I'm going to talk about what is um, well, well refer to the total asset of an individual or household that is um, do not include a minor's liability such as a mortgage, loan, and debt that you have individual or household. Another one, what is underclass? Underclass refer to the persistently poor, or uh, you have or uh, you are really really poor for a long time and socially disadvantaged group in society. Another one, I'm going to talk about what is um, culture of poetry. Culture of poetry refers to the norm, value, belief, and self concept that contribute to make yourself to have a persistently poor among the underclass. It means that because of the norm, value, and all this belief can make you poor and poor. For example, you are the, the poor, so to think that, oh, um, stealing other people, uh, uh, stealing at, uh, the money to be a thief, or playing card, or game playing is normal. So this is the norm, value, and self concept that you think that make you have a long, long pool. What is welfare? Welfare refers to the law and policy that benefit the rich. For example, the tax break that um, the rich they can break the law, they can break the um, and attack, but the pool is not like that. And another one what about what is cooperate welfare. Cooperate welfare refers to the law and policy that benefit the cooperation. For example, um, the law interest government tax that to the failing um, a business or an other company which is benefit that is which is the law and the policy that just um, benefit to the cooperation which is co cooperate the company with the government so this is the benefit it's not for the poor and another one i'm gonna talk about um, feminization what is feminization here and um, feminization refer to the, uh, the women i mean that the women that um, that are more likely to be poor than a man below the poetry line some country we think that women is poor poor I mean it's poorer and poorer than the men in society so this female this phenomenon we call um, we call it as um, feminization so now let's talk about what is working poor working poor refers to individuals who spend at least 15 weeks um, in a year and but with or in a um, labor world who um, earn their income below um, the official poetry line. I mean, I mean that in a year they spend 17 weeks and after that they earn their income below the official poetry line and in the labor world. Another one which is talking about what is coach homeless. Coach homeless refers to an individual 
who that have home of their own and who live in a family or and um, live with a friend so this is a code homeless and other one what is uh, intergenerational poetry the word intergenerational poetry refers to the poetry that passed on one generation to another generation for example my my friend who is poor and after that when they have a baby when they have a son or when they have the family their son also poor so this is the intergenerational poetry that is a poetry that passed from one generation to another generation let's get started with another one which is talking about what is SNAP which is the acronym of Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program so this is the largest US uh, um, assistance program that have the other people the poor people in the US so another one which is talking about um, what is um, Section 8 housing. Section 8 housing refers to the federal government assistance or the program for helping the poor, such as the, uh, the poor who is um, get on the lower income, the poor who is disabled, or the early learner for um, afford housing to live a or something like that. This is a Section 8 hou housing. Another one, which is the last uh, key term that is that I'm gonna talk today about what is um, human capital. Human capital for the skill, knowledge, uh, the capability of an uh, um, individual. So refer to the skill or um, knowledge or um, capability that an individual have. We call it as an um, human capital. And thank you so much. This is about. Um, the key term. Now let's move to section 2 that I'm gonna talk about why do I think all of this key term is very important is important to me. The reason that I think all of this key term is important to me because according to what I have learned every time the book all of this key term I can know more and more about the type of poetry. So after I know about the type of poetry I don't judge uh, someone who is poor by just looking by their appearance or something like that because sometimes um, I think that oh this part is really poor by their look but when we know exactly the poor is we don't judge them by just only their look we go further to understand about their total asset or their wealth or by use uh, some amazement index um, amazement index to understand about the poor and moreover, I also um, learn more and more about um, how the government help the poor from um, poetry to escape, to avoid the poetry such as um, Section 8 housing. So Section 8 housing is pretty important for me to understand, oh, and the government in, in the developed country, they use this section, they use this um, federal government program in order to help the poor to escape from um, from the poetry and I think that this is the reason that I think it is very important for me and I also know that when I living with my family and also with um, my friend so what is it called so actually I know that oh it's called about cold homeless because I don't have the hope on my own and moreover I also know that oh what is the poetry that is passed from one generation to another generation and how to avoid this because when we know the root that can cause um, the poetry in this generation we exactly know the solution we will find a solution in order to stop the poetry that passed from one generation to another generation and I think that it is very important for us to know the root of the poetry and to understand more about the poetry and um, the inequality or academic inequality in this lesson. So it really useful for me to understand more and more and have a broad knowledge to understand about concept of poetry and also the gender inequality for me. So now let's move to another part which is talking about how can I apply what I have learned about the lesson poetry and academic inequality to my life and also society. 
I think that there are many ways that I can apply it to my life. Um, when I know about the type of poetry, I think that what I have learned and applied to my life is that I don't judge the book by its cover. I don't judge these people by looking to their appearance and after that they say, oh, this is, they are poor. By just not looking at their well or their total asset or uh, something like that. And I also know that, oh, in the society, um, we also have welfare and the corporate welfare, that the law and policy that benefit just with the rich and the cooperation, not for the poor. So after that, we I will learn and learn more and more about that and to help the poor. And sometimes we can create a law and policy and we do something again with law and policy to help the poor, to help the society to be the better place for the poor and reduce the poetry. And moreover, by learning about this lesson, I know that um, we're not looking people by their appearance and see that they are poor. So when I learn about different type of poetry, so I know that sometimes it's just a, a relative poetry that you compare yourself to other people and you feel that you are poor, you feel worried, you feel frightened, you feel um, overframing and you and you I mean that you, you don't have um, a fresh idea you have you don't have a happiness because you compare yourself to other people who is better than you so when you compare yourself to other people and you think that you are poor you don't have uh, like other people it made your life um, bad and then have and, uh, and cannot find the happiness in your life so this is that I can learn that please do not compare yourself to other people who is better than you. Just looking at your own and be happy and happiness and try your best. And one more, how can I apply it to the society? I think that the way that I can say to the society about this lesson is that um, I will share my knowledge of what I have learned about this lesson to the people surrounding me to know more and more, to understand more and broaden their knowledge. Sometimes you can also broaden my knowledge and also broaden their knowledge about the poetry and the economic inequality in society and around the world and help people to um, reuse the poetry, to make the poetry to be low to make the society um, avoid the poetry, to make people um, better and better, and to reduce the poetry, the, the, the devoid of poetry. So by sharing my knowledge, or my opinion, or what I have learned about the type of poetry, how can the government help to reduce the poetry to the poor, and also how can we measure um, how can we measure the poor by not just looking at to their appearance, to their welfare? We have a national standard of measurement. So this is the end of my um, interview vlog for today, teacher and everyone. And thank you so much for your uh, paying attention. And thank you so much.